Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? I'm inside the box. If you can help me out of here, that'd be great. But uh, in the meantime, I think I got some news or something. So uh, I guess stick around. And um, hi. Hello. Welcome to the graveyard, everyone. I'm your host, Oblivious Mortem, your friendly Grim Reaper. And I'm coming for you. Introductions aside, today I'm going to be going over some recent news. It's been a bit, so I wanted to cover what's been happening with me. Also, we're going to be going over recent news, try and do some of these sort of reactionary news relay sort of logs for a little bit, because honestly, it's easy content. It's popular, and it will hopefully give you some insight to me and who I am as a person. So we'll see how it goes. This is an experiment, so, you know, if you decide you like it, and please let me know in the comments below so I know if it's right for you. So anyways, let's dive in. Um, for me, uh, new things is obviously I look different. You can see me finally. I'm a VTuber. I am excited. Got a new PC. New PC allows for so many more things for me and for you. Um, you should definitely check out stream. I've redone uh, my entire stream like setup when it comes to like what you guys see. I've added additional spells. There's just there's a lot there. I'll, I'll give you a quick taste. This is uh, this is what it will look like now when I stream. And, uh, you know, I'll just be kind of sitting over here, chilling, hanging out. And, uh, yeah, you guys come in. You see the game on screen. This is the news we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I can just uh, move myself around a little bit here for us. Get myself nice and comfy. But, yeah, I like it. I got a nice little streaming chair right here, you know. It's, it's good. It's good. I like it. We'll drop by sometime on Twitch. You'll like it, I think. Anyways, back to the other stuff. Let's go. So we're here to talk about some news. Um, I'm going to start it off with just something about Jacksepticeye because, well, if you know anything, you know I'm a fan of Jacksepticeye. And, um, he said it makes for a very clunky series when talking about uh, the new game that's actually been like the biggest launch that Xbox has had for one of its Game Pass, Pass launches. Um, the game is by Squash Games. It's the title High on Life. It's essentially like a Rick and Morty sort of universe-based game is my understanding of it. I have not played it. I do know, though, if you are interested in seeing somebody play it, my good friend Wolven Swiftwin has been doing quite a bit of content on it recently. So you can drop over to his channel and take a look at that. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, also, I mean, his reasoning behind it was mostly that he felt like he knew from previous games they'd made that basically the games talk too much and he didn't feel like he'd be able to do a very good job of being kind of the star of it. He felt like the game would be a little more of the star than he would. And you know what? That's fair. I could understand how, you know, sometimes the game talks and it's making jokes and cracking jokes and you don't want to miss it. But you also kind of want to give your audience an understanding of what makes it important that they're watching you. So fair point on Jack's side of things. I think that's totally sensible. Um, Still, though, kind of wish I would see him play it, but I guess not. Maybe you know, Mark or somebody will play it. Uh, speaking of, it looks like PewDiePie has finally uh, talked about what it is with, uh, you know, why him and Markiplier no longer do content together. Um, it looks like that essentially they just kind of drifted apart is how he, he words it. He says, you know, there wasn't really anything that happened. They just started to drift apart. I personally, I think Mark hasn't really said all too much on it and he's been kind of quiet about it. Um, I think he said similar statements of, you know, they're just, they're just not close anymore. And that's, that's normal. Friends don't stay friends forever as, you know, PewDiePie had said. I think what happened here is I, I at least noticed that after I find out about, you know, PewDiePie saying things he absolutely should not have said. He made some uh, anti-Semitic comments in the past. He's also, um, to understand, he's used the N-word with a hard R at some point. And, I mean, that's just, that's cancel culture in a nutshell. We'll say, you know, no way. Um, but he still survives to this day as a YouTuber, and, you know, it, it is what it is. Personally, decided I'm not going to watch his content anymore for, I mean, those things that he did. He sure made an apology video. You can judge for yourself whether or not he was sincere in that. I feel like it was just a view into who he is as a person underneath. That's my take on it, but because of that, I just don't really watch his content or really pay all that close attention to him, to be honest. But Markiplier was involved in this one, so, you know, we got to talk about Mark, we're inspired by Unisanus, so that's kind of how we go. That being said, um, 
Mark's side of things, I feel like Mark might feel similar to me, that he kind of drifted away from Pudes just because he didn't want to you know, be associated with kind of some of the negative behavior that was going on on Pudes' side of things, so he just kind of pushed himself away. I do know he tried to uh, kind of calm that issue down when it was like very fresh and very new, and he did a little bit go to bat for PewDiePie. He did state uh, essentially that, you know, PewDiePie's still a human being, um, you know, don't treat him horribly. He he's capable of making mistakes just like everyone else and he wasn't at all saying that what PewDiePie had had done was right uh he was saying you know absolutely I can not condone his behavior but I can also not condone the behavior of people who you know will say mean things about him and and stuff that is not true uh because people were really attacking PewDiePie at the time and you know that's honestly like a very mature response and totally par for the course for Markiplier that's why we love him you know, he, he doesn't want to be the problem starter. He wants to be kind of the problem solver. And I respect that. It's something I love about him. Uh, other news, Pokimane, if you don't know, she's a fun character. You know, she's she's all right. Some people don't like her. Some people like her. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's it's She's another Twitch star and, and she gets her bag and good for her. She doesn't seem like a bad person. Uh, that's my take on her. But she said some stuff about uh, Ludwig, who if you're not familiar with Ludwig, he's another streamer. Uh, he has moved recently from Twitch over to YouTube. So he abandoned Twitch, came to this platform. He did a chess box event and i guess somewhere or another that came up in conversation and pokimane's a good friend of his so essentially she said she's been working out and she feels like she could potentially beat ludwig i guess i i am to understand she doesn't think that it would be like in the brute force part of the contest i am understanding it's more of like the strategy um, like she would do something like have QT Cinderella, who is Ludwig's girlfriend uh, and another Twitch streamer, said that, you know, she'd get her help in the matter and, and go about, you know, potentially poisoning something he would eat or drink with some laxatives before the fight. So, you know, she'd have she'd have a, some sort of a, you know, advantage over him on the strategy side of things so that she could win. So, you know, that's just cute. I, I just found that, you know, interesting, soft, lighthearted news. So uh, another one. Far-right media personality Baked Alaska is sentenced to 60 days in prison for live-streaming the Capitol riot. So he's somebody who was actually there. Um, I'm going to read some of the highlights that I got out of this article by uh, CBS News. Far-right media personality admitted to live-streaming to thousands of viewers. His participation in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol was sentenced Tuesday to 60 days in prison. Anthony... Geonet, known online as Baked Alaska, pleaded gu guilty in July to one misdemeanor count of illegal picketing in the Capitol building. Prosecutors, who requested a sentence of 75 days in prison, alleged in court on Tuesday the defendant urged others to breach the Capitol before he made his way into the building as it was under siege by pro-Trump rioters. To me, this speaks as he was one of the instigators. The whole thing that happened January 6th was just kind of, to be honest, kind of fucked up. So many people, like the the people that went there, in my opinion, were a little disillusioned to what was actually going on. And my take on that is, to be honest with you, I feel that Fox News as a news organization just pretty much for the most part misrepresents or lies to its uh, news constituents or news base, whatever we want to call them, uh, the people who watch. And because of that, it, it just turns into uh, uh, people believe things that just, I mean, don't really have a good basis in reality and i think they do it because there's you know money to be made by doing that somebody is encouraging them to do it uh because it makes them money and it, 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 i think it's kind of a money farm that's that's kind of how it works out and how it shakes out when you kind of boil everything down there's a lot of steps to it though it's it's a very complicated matter but if you question that my suggestion would be to just look into uh places that have kind of made the analysis for us about like which news sources are trusted and how to go about you know knowing who's going to have the most bias that sort of thing i am going to try and take in this series like news from different articles to give you a different 
you know, pieces of information, but I am going to call out when it's something I trust or not. Something else that happened with this story, he said, occupy the Capitol. Let's go. We ain't leaving this bitch. So, I mean, to me, that's more words of inflammatory uh, things. And when you're in a situation like that with a large crowd, I know that there's, like, herd mentality stuff at play. So when somebody's shouting this sort of stuff, they're the person who's inciting things that can be violent and happen. And I know his, in this article it mentions that, like, his uh, defense was, you know, trying to point out times that he was trying to stop people from causing damage and things like that. Or not trying to stop, but, like, telling people to stop. Once you've done the inciting part of it, trying to take that back is ever going to be applicable. Like, you've already fired the gun. It's like trying to recall the bullet. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. Uh, his past brushes with the law included tearing down a menorah outside an area. Arizona County office building and assault, prosecutors said. Such accent actions, McFadden said, that which is the prosecutor, demonstrated a very troubling vocation of profiting off of his crimes. And it seems like, yeah, he's probably doing that. I mean, he's sensationalizing the issue, trying to get, you know, potentially negative PR and turn that to a positive PR sort of thing. Um, why would you attack a menorah? Like, can we call that racist? I don't know. Uh, but, like, assault, that's awful. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, this is what the guy looks like. I mean, Big Alaska looks like he's absolutely kind of a fanboy with those glasses of Dr. Disrespect. And it just... I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't... It, I, I don't think the mullet uh, is going to be back in style ever the 80s called they want their hair back uh anyhow moving on got something funny that happened um with stephen colbert uh talking to uh prince harry and i guess well i'll, I'll let them tell it but something i want to mention stephen colbert here he is he is my man love that dude he is so nice i have talked to him uh over the phone before i was a roadside assistance person his car broke down in the mountains of new york you know, he lives out there and he he just needed help had car issues needed somebody to come get him i got him a tow truck while he was uh, sitting there you know he was just a little nervous because he's a celebrity you know people could just get upset at him he comments on politics sometimes you know it, it makes sense he was a little concerned for his safety he was kind of out in the middle of nowhere so he asked me to stay on the line with him and we just chatted for a while we talked about some uh some lord of the rings stuff because he's a real big tolkien nerd i am a bit too so i mean we talked about how i have this weird belief that when it comes to the movies and lord of the rings series i always felt like the hobbits should have the hair on the other side of their feet like on the bottoms of their feet in the story i know that it uses the word tops of their feet but i always took it to be like kind of relative because like if you bend your knee right and you have your your leg like fully bent so that your uh, your heel is hitting your butt uh at that point the top of your foot right is what would normally be the bottom so it just made a little more sense to my kid brain when i was reading the stories because it was like okay if if uh they're you know supposed to be really good at being like kind of sneaky like you know because in the hobbit you got bilbo's running around inside of like a dragon's den with his invisibility ring on and that doesn't take care of the sound of his footsteps right so the dragon doesn't necessarily know where he is except for like when he talks so he tries to like throw his voice to throw the dragon off right he couldn't do that if his feet weren't specifically capable of making him a bit quieter right you would think because dragons are supposed to have like super good senses so it was always my theory that you know the movies got it wrong but that's because it wasn't written in a clear way nothing against jr on that one like tolkien you know he wrote an amazing series but it just it, it always felt like something that was off to me so we talked about that for a while me and colbert and you know he was like oh, that's interesting i'm gonna have to take a look at that so yeah that was me and the, me and his conversation i don't know if he'll remember it but if, it, if by chance stephen colbert's out there and he ends up watching this hey buddy how's it going i would love to hear from you uh anyways on to what happened with harry you write a lot about your brother uh you write about him with love mm -hmm. um you call him willie but there is a different willie that also gave you some pain and trouble. You got frostbite. Frost nip. Frost nip. Frost nip. Frost nip on a delicate part of your anatomy. Now, I don't know what the difference is between frostbite and frost dip, nip. I mean, nip sounds a little less severe, I'm assuming, but goddamn, bro. Like we all, 
we all feeling the sad right now for this man. Like all us guys were like, dude, whoa, that's some shit. And you write about this in the book when you went to the North now Pole. They're, now they're interested. Okay. <laughs> Can you explain how it is that the royal standard got frost nip? <laughs> Walk us through it. Take all the time in the world. How long have you... How long... Can I have a drink? Sure. There you go. It's like, I need a moment. How long have you been waiting to ask that question? <laughs> Since I we've read taken, the book yesterday. We've taken... <laughs> oh, wow. We've taken quite a leap. I, I believe that he read the book in a day. I'm just putting that out there. He seems like the type who's able to speed read because he's so knowledgeable and he he really like I personally believe he's he's definitely a smart person. Very, very intelligent, Stephen Colbert is. And if he was given the book a day before him, I feel like he probably read it all the way through. Yes. From from grief and trauma to, to my Todger. <laughs> Todger, that's a that's a very gentle word. Is it gentle? Todger. Sounds like a nice nickname. <laughs> you know my friends, here's Willie, here's Todger. <laughs> here's John Thomas. Well, hang on a sec, yeah. But in I care for a game of t I mean, some things that, like, British people say is... It just, like, it does kind of come off that way, you know? Like, it just comes off a little, I don't know, more subtle. But then at the same time, their, their insults, like... You, you ever had a British person, like, yell at you? and curse at you like they they go ham they go hard in the paint like damn tallywhacker <laughs> so how did the, my, my todger make it how in. did your todger i know how it made it into the book you <laughs> typed it but how did <laughs> how did it get frost nipped why did you not take care of the the royal jewels the reason the, <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to have this conversation because there's no one in this audience that has probably read the book yet apart from you and me. You, so you we, go talk to the about, North Pole. we talk about context, right? The context of this is that you're going to the North Pole. Thank you. Okay, and things got very cold. At what point did you realize there was a crisis at the South Pole? Um, <laughs> that's pretty good. Kind of felt low, low hanging, but Once good. I got home. <laughs> really? Yeah. All the way home? Yeah. It took it that long to thaw well, no, out? because, look, okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the problem was, first of all, it didn't turn into an icicle, right? Didn't or, snap or, off like a graham cracker. Or, no, exactly. You that would have been awful. It. it wasn't like that. Never? No. Well. Uh... <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I face palmed there for a moment. Uh, couldn't see it, but it was totally face palm. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, uh, Frostbite at least, I saw a video the other day of a guy, he had apparently gone up, I think it was Mount Rushmore, and when he was descending, he ran out of oxygen, and he got Frostbite in his fingers. Um, and he took a video of himself when he was at, like, the hospital elevator, I think, or he was at least in an elevator, and it was like a reflective surface in the elevator. Um, and he was, like, tapping his fingers against the, the metal, and oh my gosh, it, it looked awful. It looked so gross, because, like, his fingers from, like, just above, like, the, the knuckle, and I don't mean, like, the knuckle in the middle of your finger, I mean the one at the base of your finger like just a little bit beyond that everything turned to black just total black and he was tapping it against the thing and oh my god just the idea that it would tap and sound like it was like nails is what it sounded like like when people tap their nails on stuff but it was just the tips of his fingers like it wasn't nails it was just fingers and it was like wow so i mean i guess good for him that that didn't happen to his God, could you imagine? Oh. Okay, so it's, it seems okay. It's fine now, thank you. Um, so the, the, <laughs> the context oh, was good. that these amazing veterans were doing a walk to the North Pole. Yes. They had all the training, I had none, and I turned up thinking, how bad can this be? It's only um, the North Pole. It's only, it's only the North Pole. It's only minus 35 degrees. I've got the salad pets. I've got the jacket. I've got the warm stuff. Um, I've got all the things that I need. But what I didn't have... So I've, I've grown up in somewhere where it gets really freaking cold at times, okay? Like, I've seen negative temperatures like he's talking about. The people who aren't from around here, they don't know how to deal with it. Like, they bring a jacket, but it's not, like... A warm jacket you know it's not one of the ones with like tons of insulation it doesn't have like the wool on the inside like they don't 
they don't bring that when they come here sometimes and it gets that cold and it's it's actually dangerous for them like there's people who have died in the state i live in just because it got so cold during a winter that they just they just couldn't make it anymore i, I remember stories of like people dying on their front porch and stuff because they couldn't get back into their house like just things like that that have happened and it's it's crazy stuff that happens when you get too cold you gotta you gotta be careful when you're in really cold environments you really do make sure you got a way to get heat and if you don't make sure you got a way to get a hold of somebody who can help you those are like key things like don't go without that of was um what i had when i actually went to the south pole which was a cushion <laughs> which which if you <laughs> which is which did anybody have prince harry saying cock cushion on live tv on their 2023 bingo card Anybody? No? Okay. She's a no one in my life when I was a child could ever explain to me that someday the Duke of Sussex was going to say the words <laughs> cushion to me. And it would all make sense. This is absolutely surreal. Well, look, first of all, it's great that it makes sense. Yes. Because otherwise I'd move myself into this chair. Yes. So is it so, like so, down? What's, what, what are we talking about well, here? Well, there was a lovely lady from uh, uh, Helly Hansen who actually... Is this the beginning of a limerick? <laughs> <laughs> a lovely lady who, who, who made a cushion for me, having been told by the guide from the North Pole, yeah. he's doing this again. Yeah. You know, he made a joke about it being a limerick, but I want to just acknowledge for a moment that it would be pretty easy to come up with a rhyme that could become later on like a children's school rhyme about prince harry and his cock cushion because you got his name's harry and then you got cock cushion and a whole story behind it like prince harry has a brother willie but his willie almost froze when he went on a tilly i don't know is tilly a word for like a an excursion I, but like and then so is harry cock got a little I don't, I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I'm not going to do it on the spot, but like, it's just, it's, uh, it feels like the sort of thing that's going to be a part of history. If somebody just makes that rhyme up, that's all they got to do. Just build off maybe what I said and like, I don't know, maybe comment that. Like, what is the thing that you would make for a rhyme about Prince Harry's dick? Anyway. Yes, he's going to need some extra protection because the pants that I was wearing, uh, you guys wear pants, uh, underwear, Trousers. underwear. Oh, pants or underwear, underwear. Yeah. right, so, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, that's all I had. So my... Yeah, I feel like Great Britain has, like, we just call it underwear? Or boxers? But, like, you guys call it pants or trousers at times? Like, just like you call pants, pants? I don't... I feel like clothing for men, or even women, is a little interesting to navigate and slightly confusing in the UK, but... I don't know, maybe if you're from the UK, tell me. Do, do you have issues where sometimes you go into a store and you're like, hey, I need pants, and they're like, oh, the, you know, pants section's over there, and you're like, no, no, not, not like long pants, I need, I need underwear. And they're like, oh, like, but you guys don't normally say underwear, right? Like, so, what do you say, the other pants, the smaller pants, the, the underpants, because then you're just underpants, I don't, that confuses me. Somebody tell me. <laughs> Man piece, my Johnson, my Wilson, my Todger, my Willie. Yes. Yeah, all the things and any other words. Exactly. If you need to know any other words, I think the Austin yes. Powers uh, yes. sequence is a very good. Yes. The uh, Tower of London. Exactly. <laughs> That's new. Big Ben. <laughs> um, yes. That. The, the, the... You said it's new, but you gotta wonder if, like, any of the ladies in his life have been, like, describing his dick to, like, their friends and, like, little chatty group, you know? Like, oh, yeah, we like, whipped out Big Ben, and then, uh, 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 and, like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, I was riding the Tower of London. Like, I, I feel like there's ladies out there who, you know, nah, 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 they chat, right? And they tell their friend, you know, maybe their best friend, maybe not all their friends, but, you know, they, they have those conversations where they, you know, they make little funny nicknames for the dick. Uh, that, that, that's got to happen. That, that, I feel like that happens. And it makes me wonder if, like, if it's just new to him, but, like, other people have already been there. <laughs> The, 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 the piece was against one layer of clothing or two very thin layers of clothing and the cold to the mi no. minus 35. And when you're walking, you're you're hot and you're yeah. trying not to sweat because the sweat freezes. Yeah. And once it's numb, you don't know the pain 
Oh, it's, it's just right. not. So when do you find out? Like, what, when does it occur oh, to you that something not, weeks, not as all weeks right? After, weeks after I go back. Weeks after, and no. uh, uh, why weeks? I don't understand. That, I don't. I don't get this either. Like, why would it take weeks? Like, I want a medical understanding from someone of like, why would it take weeks for you to realize that like your dick's having problems? because of cold like i feel like the moment you got back into a warm environment and warmed yourself back up like you should know why would it be so delayed but i think they get into that a little and, i mean do you not take inventory on a regular basis i'll get to that later next week next nope. week nope. you nope. are a busy man <laughs> nothing visible oh really nothing obvious okay it was a it was a slow deteriorating uh, situation <laughs> That's unlike, the part. That's the unlike, part. Unlike, that's unlike, the part we're editing out of this very, interview, very, boy, right there. <laughs> All right. Very unlike similar what? to this experience. Unlike, yeah, yeah, yes. Unlike what? Unlike what? That's right. You, you carry on. <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing great. No, you're doing. Great. I don't know if I've ever seen Prince Harry take a dig at somebody. Just saying, like he just took a dig at Stephen Colbert a little bit. But I mean, Stephen's been giving the digs out, so I mean, it's fair. But like, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Like, it's a very clever one. It was, it was, it was subtle. It wasn't, it wasn't hurtful too much, you know. Like Colbert, Colbert's a big boy. Great. <laughs> how's, how's your penis? Doing great? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Stephen Colbert asking Prince Harry, how's your dick doing? <laughs> like, what? What am I watching? What universe do we stop into? Like, when did this become a thing? A little antifreeze. Well, There's some people freeze. here who are, sh who are horrified. Most of them are amused. Okay. <laughs> yep. I'm going to stop it here because I, I don't know where the rest of this goes. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that happened. Prin Prince Harry's Willie almost froze off, I guess. Maybe not almost, but uh, there were some problems. And I wonder, you know, what those problems might have entailed. Like, But I don't know, that's kind of embarrassing. We'll just steer clear of that. Get enough boner jokes from Wolf and Swiftwin and somewhat deadly. Uh, so now we're getting into a little bit more hard-hitting stuff. Um, just just posted today an article about a six-year-old that's accused of shooting someone at a school, and they aren't the first. I'm going to go through some of the highlights of kind of the, the concepts of this article because it's very long. It tries to get across. Um, prosecutor sat at a small table across from a six-year-old boy watching him color. Kid smiled, showing off the gaps from the front teeth he had just lost. He said he was expecting a visit from the tooth very soon. Two months had passed since the child had shot and killed his first grade classmate. A first grader shot and killed another student at school. And this, th there's a couple stories in this about pretty much exactly that happening. Um, on February 29, 2000, the boy approached a girl in his class, then raised a gun and shot her in the chest. Uh, Kayla Rowland, who was also six, died soon after. So shot and killed. Now, this is back in 2000. The reason it's relevant comes a little later. Bush knew from the beginning that the boy was too young to be charged with any crime, but he wanted to understand if a child that age could grasp what he had done. The prosecutor decided to visit the boy at his... Uh, at a center for abused and neglected children in Flint, Michigan. Uh, the boy told Bush about his favorite plush toys and said he was excited to meet the Easter Bunny. He said he liked where he was living. The people who worked there read books to him. So, I mean, I think everybody, for the most part, at least around the kid, understands he didn't know really what he was doing. And, I mean, I just can't imagine, like, could... Being a school teacher in that sort of situation, have a kid walk up in class and just shoot another kid, like, they're six. They should be, like, learning how to read simple words like the and car, not shooting fucking guns. What the hell? Like, this, this is America. Uh, this kid's a baby, Bush recalled, thinking. He doesn't have the bil ability to form an intent to commit murder, and... I mean, I think they're probably right. I don't feel like I knew enough when I was six years old to even understand enough about like what death was. Like I had depression at the time and 
the thing that I thought was not like killing myself or offing myself. Rather, it was I just wished I wasn't born, like that I wasn't there. I didn't think about like there could be an end, you know, like that wasn't a concept really that was established. Uh, so coming to a little more in the present. Friday afternoon, a six-year-old boy in Virginia who, according to police, had shot his teacher on purpose. Uh, this happened at Richneck Elementary School in Newport News. Uh, how could a child just old enough to tie his shoes and add up numbers commit such a violent act? On Monday, at a news conference where investigators announced the gun had belonged to the boy's mother, both the school superintendent and police chief described the shooting as unprecedented. But in this country, almost no form of gun violence is unique. And I 100% agree with that statement. We are beyond the point where it's unique anymore. Like, anybody who's any age has shot someone. At this, It's just, it's happened. I, I Maybe not like the 110-year-old shooting somebody, but, you know, uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, since 1999, most shootings at K-12... Uh, K through 12, which is kindergarten through 12th grade. So that's our you know, elementary to high school for anybody outside the U.S. 69% uh, happened at high schools, according to an analysis by the Washington Post. Among the 62 at elementary schools, 49 were committed by adults or teens. In at least 11 cases, though, the person who pulled the trigger was no older than 10. So... A large portion of it, you know, happened at high schools. But in the portion that did happen at elementary schools, I mean, they're no, no, they're no older than 10 that they're doing this. Like, this is, to me, a little, it, it feels very insane. But it's just, it's the real world. It's what we live with. Uh, in nine of those shootings, children brought the loaded guns from home. In the other two, the children fired weapons police brought to campus. Oh, hang on a moment. I'm going to have to pause things big section of time i'm gonna have to edit out so editor me edit that last part out um but what just happened was i received a call about um somebody who does like the public opinion polls and stuff like that which by the way if you're if you're somebody who's like a conspiracy theorist out there and you think oh there's not really people who take time to complete all these tests things that they get all these numbers for it's all just bullshit some of it i'll be honest there's times it is bullshit that does happen. I'm not going to say it doesn't. That's insane. But there is absolutely people out there who take time out of their day because they understand that it's important to science and understanding our world that they'll tell people how they feel about an issue or what their political beliefs are, this or that. I am one of those people because I understand it's important. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to sign up for those sorts of things. You can find ways online, I'm sure. But anyways, back to what we were doing. Okay. Uh, it says, in nine of those shootings, children brought the loaded guns from home. In the other two, the children fired weapons police brought to campus. So, in two school shootings, it was quite literally students shot guns that police brought with them. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe just a thought. Unless there's, like, a school shooter already actively happening. Maybe don't bring the guns with you or, I don't know, have gun locks on them that cover the trigger so like a student doesn't pull the trigger or maybe just don't have the chamber loaded and maybe have it in like a some sort of a lock that can't like allow it to load the the chamber so that it can't fire like you know there's things you can do to prevent that that to there's two examples of could have been prevented completely and it was police it's like come on uh, most of the shootings were unintentional it says in Houston, a six-year-old boy found a uh, .308, or sorry, .380 caliber handgun on the floor of a home where he was staying. He took the weapon to school and accidentally fired it in the cafeteria, wounding himself and two other children. In Chicago, an eight-year-old boy brought a gun he had found under his mother's bed, and when it went off in his backpack, the round nicked a seven-year-old's stomach. In California, a child younger than 11 spotted an AR-15 mounted to the side of a police motorcycle at the, at the school that day as part of a safety presentation. Ironic? Yeah. Uh, and he squeezed the trigger, wounding three students. The lone case that directly compares the shootings in Virginia was the one in Michigan 23 years ago, which is the one that, the, that we'd previously talked about. Um, 
His focus turned to how a first grader could have gotten a loaded gun in the first place. And yeah, that's, I mean, our children getting guns. And I, I think that's a valid question. And I think it'll, it happens far too often. And there should be things done about that. Investigators soon learned that the 32 caliber semi-automatic had been stored in a shoebox along with chocolate candies at what they described as a drug house where the boy often stayed. He had played with it before, Bush said, twirling it on his finger like a revolver from the Old West. So this kid is a first grader who's playing with a gun, spinning it around his finger <laughs> like he's a cowboy. Probably because he thinks it's cool and he doesn't understand really how dangerous it is. And he's just been neglected. He's he's in, they described it as a drug house. Like, these are things that happen to real kids. And it's, to me, a real reason to think about just taking guns off the street entirely however we can. Like, I understand, like, you know, there's never going to be a gun law that's going to keep people who already have weapons from keeping those weapons because it's their property and we're not about taking people's property away from them but if we stop them from buying it new like eventually those guns gotta break less of them will be around some people will do the, the whole thing where like they melt their barrel or turn their gun into something else like a work of art or something so that it can't be used for violence anymore like that's a that's a decent mindful concept i feel like um, but yeah, like that, th this, this, these things happen in America, but other countries don't have these problems. And it's mostly because they just don't have guns for the most part. And yeah, okay, there's knife, there's knife crime. You can't stop somebody who wants to do a crime from doing a crime, but you can stop them from, like, you can make sure that you're not putting them in the room with the things that can do more damage, right? Like, you wouldn't put Osama bin Laden in a room with the nuclear football. You just wouldn't do that. It doesn't make sense. So why do you put guns that can be used for, you know, quite literally mass destruction in reach of people who can use them for mass destruction? It's just, it, why do that? Uh, it, it don't make sense to me. It really don't. The 19-year-old man accused of owning the weapon served two years behind bars. So the guy who made it so that the kid could even bring the gun to school in the first place did serve jail time. I think that's absolutely justified. Uh, maybe two years was too short. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the facts of the case. So hopefully the judge made a good call. Uh, the boy had been chronically neglected. Even after he was taken from his parents and placed into foster care, some people wanted him punished. Yeah, and uh, that kid is six years old. Like, you punish a six-year-old with putting them in time out, or some parents, you know, spanking, I don't recommend, but that's a thing. Um, like, put them in time out, you ground them from the Game Boy. Like, putting a six-year-old in prison or juvenile detention for years and years just that's not going to make anything better especially not if the issue was that the kid was being neglected to begin with like the kid is absolutely in that case a product of his environment and i think a lot of people are products of their environment and they don't realize it like my depression was a product of my my development as a kid being in an environment that was not suited to good development and so now i've had depression for like my whole life and i've been struggling with it and i am proud to announce that very recently like literally yesterday I had a meeting with my doctor and she told me i am apparently like my depression is totally in remission like that's big news and it felt really good to hear somebody else say it like i'm feeling it like i am absolutely on the up and i am i i feel great i don't feel like i'm all hopped up on drugs or something like i thought that might be the case i thought i might have like fuzzy head like not clear thinking absolutely not i feel totally normal other than the fact that i am just happier and have more motivation and i'm not like chronically happy like i can get sad like i'm still normal but yeah like 
the medication has made an absolute world of difference. I, to, for anybody out there wondering, I'm on bupropion. I recommend it because a lot of the things out there are SSRIs, and that's what they use to treat depression, and we don't actually know what those are doing. And that's a whole other thing I can get into at some point if you guys want. I could make a video about probably that topic alone, and I am willing to if you ask for it. So let me know. Um, uh, you have two victims in these kinds of cases, Bush said. You have the child who's been victimized by somebody else to the point that they can't keep them safe. And that's that's totally accurate. Like, it's a six-year-old six kid. Somebody was just not taking care of him and not looking after him, and shit happened. And that's why you be a responsible parent when you're a parent, you know? Later, other kids in the room would describe... A, oh, this is, sorry, uh, this is another story of a time where uh, there was a shooting in a, a school. Uh, this is a, from the perspective of a teacher, I believe it's told. So later, other kids in the room would describe a boy slamming his backpack on the desk. Uh, Post, the, or Poss, I'm not sure how her last name is pronounced, I apologize, um, heard a loud bang, and when she turned around, Amina had slumped to the floor. One of her students, uh, Poss is the teacher. When she opened the girl's coat, blood gushed from the child's side, saturating her clothes. A hollow point bullet had passed through her elbow and into her midsection. Talking constantly to Amina, she pressed her palm against the hole. If ever anybody gets a gunshot wound, press press everything you have into where they got shot. And just do it. The more blood flow you can keep from getting to the wound, the less they're going to bleed. Like... Just, just, this, this woman, this teacher, fucking saint, fucking angel for how she acted, okay? She did amazing. I do not see anything in this whole article about the things that she did when this was going on that were not the correct thing to do. Like, if I ever get shot, I want somebody like this lady around, okay? I want somebody who's, who knows what they're doing to keep me alive. And she did. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, the teacher never let up on the wound or the calming words to her student. Only when the paramedics arrived to take her place did Pa stand up and soon began to shake. So, like, literally traumatic. Like, she's shaking. I would be, too. I've been in similar situations, and it causes that. Absolutely. Uh, in one, with a hole blown through the bottom, she found a heck, uh, heckler and coach 45. She was stunned to see the name of an unassuming nine-year-old, uh, nine-year-old boy, written on the bag. He was never on my radar as one that would bring a gun to school, the teacher said. Amina recovered after multiple surgeries and months in the hospital. Uh, Post, now 66, remained in touch, saw her graduate from high school. The hollow point still lodged near her spine. So this girl's probably... If you have a bullet lodged near your spine, I imagine you have days where you're in just crazy amounts of pain. Like, she's been forever wounded, you know? Like, it's... The bullet's still there, too. Like, I think you have issues of, like, maybe having lead poisoning and things from a bullet over time. Like, there's a lot... And I imagine they probably didn't remove it because they couldn't because it was so close to the spine. So, like, uh, it's got to be all kinds of fucked up. Like, I feel so bad for that girl. But, you know what? Power to her. She's graduated high school keep rocking you're doing amazing i'm rooting for you the boy with the gun never returned to the school at all he was arrested held on a fifty thousand dollar bond which by the way to get out that means you need to pay five thousand dollars because it's always ten percent that's just how it works in america you have to pay that uh to a bail bonds company and then they give the court the fifty thousand and essentially it's like a loan um so you pay ten percent of it and that's all legalized they like can't do more or less i don't believe um, so it's like you have to pay 10% so they pay 5,000 and that gets the person out of jail and then if they show up the bond gets given back to the company and then your 5,000 gets given back to you as well um, so held on a $5,000 bond or sorry $50,000 bond and charged in juvenile court with assault and unlawful possession of a firearm wearing an orange jumpsuit he tearfully told the judge he had trouble reading the documents. The fucking six-year-old kid is getting asked to read court documents. The kid's not going <laughs> to... I do. Oi. Like, that kid doesn't understand. He's six. 
The charges were dismissed after the boy compile, uh, complied with court directives to get counseling and write a letter of apology. I mean, that's probably all the kid's gonna be. I mean, like, that's... That even feels like a lot to ask for from a kid, you know, in that situation, because it wasn't... In this case, it really wasn't the kid's fault. Like, the adults should have taken better care to not let this happen. I'm sorry I hurt you because I brought a gun to school, he wrote in the letter. I wish you were out of the hospital playing basketball and going back to school. The basketball thing, I'm going to assume he knew that she liked basketball. And even if the kid brought the gun to school because he thought it'd be cool or because he thought he might scare somebody off or whatever, who's maybe bullying him, some, who knows, whatever the kid's thought process was, I don't think he meant for it to shoot this girl absolutely. So, like, I don't... Down here, on this page, I didn't think of this before, but, like, down here on this page, that looks like tear, tear marks to me, like, water dripped on this page from him crying while he wrote it. And this kid... He probably only just learned how to be even able to write. And, like, one of the first things he's probably writing is a note to say sorry that somebody got shot because there was a gun in his backpack. Like, goddamn. Fucking dramatic. The charges against him infuriated Paws, who argued that his parents were entirely to blame. He had taken the gun, which belonged to his mother's boyfriend, from a glove compartment. The mother and boyfriend were charged with unlawful possession and felony third-degree assault. The mother was sentenced to 14 months in prison. Who leaves a loaded 45 laying around? The teacher asked. Lots of people, as it turns out. As of 2015, as many as 4.6 million children lived in homes with at least one loaded, unlocked firearm. 23 states passed legislation requiring people to secure their firearms. Regulations vary widely, as does the enforcement of them. At the, Six-year-olds are bringing guns to school, and people are dying because of it. And we can't do something, to me, as simple as have all 50 states agree that people should have to secure their firearms at home, especially if there's a kid anywhere near it, in order to just make it so this sort of thing doesn't happen. Like, that just seems like common sense. But it's not legislated everywhere, and... I just, I can't fathom why it wouldn't be legislated to me on a federal level as just a requirement. Like, sure, you can still have guns, but like, just don't be stupid with them. Like, make sure you can take care of what can happen. Be preventative. I don't feel like it's much to ask. And, yeah, there's, there's, there's more that this article goes on and tells other stories of kids with guns. And it's just, like, it's it's literally kids. Like, it's children. And I just, I don't know. This breaks my, breaks my soul. It's ridiculous. Anyways, other news. Uh, let's see. For this one, Allison Williams admits famous father connection helped her get acting gig. So... Daughter of veteran NBC journalist Brian Williams got her first gig acting when she was cast in the HBO series Girls in 2012. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know who uh, this girl is, but like, I haven't seen the show. It just feels a little scummy to me. All that people are looking for is an acknowledgement that it's not a level playing field. It's just unfair, period. End of story. And no one's really working that hard to make it fair. To not acknowledge that me getting started as an actress versus someone with zero connection isn't the same. It's ludicrous. Like, it... I, the way she says this just to me feels really out of touch. Um, it, it feels like spoiled celebrity being spoiled celebrity. Like, that's what it comes off as. Like, and she wasn't a celebrity, obviously, I guess, until she got the role. But, like, I don't know. It, I'm not rooting for you, that's for sure. Like... I hope she doesn't get more gigs, but she probably will. And that's just kind of the reality, I guess, of Hollywood. And I feel I feel like, okay, yeah, sure, the director is the one who picks or, you know, whatever staffing person picks, whoever the hell it is in, you know, production. But why, why not, if you are somebody who has connections and you can tell 
you're you're getting offered it because of connections why not just say no right you have that option tell them no if you think that it was influenced by by somebody just telling them hey you should do it if your dad or you know mother or whoever you have connections with seems to be the one influencing the decision have a little integrity say no get it on your own get it on your own merit you know there's there's other acting gigs you can get another acting gig if you know people in the business make it a point to let them help you find one by telling you when an opportunity comes up but ask them not to like put in good words you know like just do it yourself be a good actress actor just do that I don't know. That's that's my take on it. It just I don't know. Feels a little spoiled bradish. That's that's the stuff I glean from it. I will say this was from not Fox News, so I mean, leave it to Fox News to import to give us news that's not terribly important and revolves around rich people, I guess. A uh, woman says she had a Tinder date with the Idaho killing suspect in 2015, where he said she had birthing hips and insisted on coming to her room. This one's fun. Uh, I don't know why they put this down here when it's the same as what's up there. But anyways, uh, in an interview with Daily Beast, woman said while she was still in college, she went on a date with Brian. I'm not going to Koberger, I guess. Oh, Pennsylvania native who's accused of killing four University of Idaho students in November. The pair had matched on Twinder Tinder and went to the movies together. She said, he started being really pushy about coming up with her to watch another movie. I'm like, okay, red flag, big red flag, right? There's red flags that I feel like get ignored by women, right, sometimes. And don't ignore them. Just don't. If you get red flags, just don't ignore them. But I've, I've learned, like, I used to be a red flag, right? Like, I used to be a bit of a head case. I'll admit it. Wasn't, wasn't my... It wasn't my better times. It wasn't me and my best. Totally accurate. And there were women I'm sure I gave red flags to. And I now, to retrospect, like totally understand why they would have rejected me. And it felt horrible, sure. But the, the, the knowing now how things were for them, how things are for them, yeah, no, I'm good with it. Like, we cool, G. Uh, when she agreed and the two went to her room to pick out another movie, she said she started to feel uneasy. Well, I mean, you ignored the red flag and invited him into your room. Still feels sketch. <laughs> why? I, I don't see why she would have. I'm not trying to blame her. Like, I, just, I don't see why it doesn't. The article doesn't give that. I'm sure, she had her reasons, but like, I'm still on the don't skip over them red flags don't let the glasses be ruby you know like i get it treat guys like threats it makes sense now um while Koberger was very polite and nice during the date she said he completely changed gears when they were in her room oh no that's not good that's foreshadowing uh definitely felt uncomfortable when he decided he needed to wait outside of the bathroom for me yeah no uh sorry what <laughs> That's creeper, that's creeper level 9,000. Don't, like, I'd stay in that bathroom until cops arrive. That'd be me. Uh, she pretended to loudly throw up before Koberger left. So literally, like, she didn't leave the bathroom. And good for her. She, she faked puking and got him to leave. Girl, survived this situation. Like, IQ 9,000 move. You survived. Uh... After an hour or so of him being gone, he messaged me and said I had good birthing hips and just never messaged back. Yeah, no, you shouldn't have never messaged back. Like, absolutely 10 out of 10 decision. You did the right thing and it makes sense why girls don't text guys back. If you don't text a guy back because you don't feel it because something seems off, girl, you might have just dodged a bullet because look, this girl did. Uh, the pair never spoke again. Yep. I wouldn't have either. I would have ghosted that man. And you did the right thing. Co 
Kohlberger was arrested earlier this month on first-degree murder charges in the deaths of four University of Idaho students and one count of burglary. And who knows if the, the girls that he, or the people that he did kill also rejected him. Who knows? The, the article does not say. But, like, I mean, there's probably going to be more of the story eventually, but it, it just... Now they did, because this guy fucking creepo. Uh, Kohlberger has a history of lashing out at women. Often acted creepy, see, told you, uh, toward women and that female employees and customers in the uh, in a brewery he often frequented. Uh, so, acted creepy towards women and at female employees and customers in a brewery he often frequented, I think is the better way to have written that. I don't think they meant that. I, th they, I think they meant at. Uh, but anyways, uh, according to the owner of the brewery, the suspect would ask women where they lived and whom they were there with, then would get angry when they did not respond. Like, why the fuck are you concerned with who lives with them? Or who's at their house? That is like... I don't know, I feel like if you see that from somebody you work with, that feels like the sort of thing that should be, like, police should be involved a little bit. I know there's not anything, like, there wasn't a crime because he's just asking questions, but like... Oh, maybe not police, maybe there... I feel like for things where you see, like very clear demonstrations that something is completely off with someone like this. I feel like there should be like a way to just like call like for a social worker to come out. Like I know there's wellness checks, but that gets done by police and police don't know stuff, you know, and it's not their fault. They get trained in other stuff. That's just, that's valid. But I, I really like the idea of like the pilot programs and stuff that are going on in places where like social workers will come out to calls like that because the social worker at this one might have realized this dude's like fucking crazy and been like hey you're a danger to your health and everyone else's you're coming with me and then like police officer could have put him in some handcuffs and they would have taken him away and like uh, rehabilitated him and maybe this all would have never happened like for all we know he's got brain tumor that makes him super hyper aggressive or hateful or murderous who knows or maybe he's just fucked up because of shit that happened to him I don't know but it potentially could have been prevented but st like big red flags like this we don't we don't really have a way of, of acting on them, I guess, as a society. And I feel like there should be a way. Like, if a social worker's just walking by and they see this happen sort of thing, they, they might be able to do something because they've got the ability to do that. They have that power, but if, if they're not around, what do you get? I don't know. So, yeah, anyways... That's stuff that happened in the news. I don't know what to call this segment yet, so if you have an idea on what I might want to call this, maybe death-themed, maybe skeleton-themed, maybe a bone to pick with the news, I don't know. But anyways, if you got an idea on a cool title for for this sort of a segment, let me know. Because, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it open, talk about real-world stuff that happens, talk about, you know, funny stuff like Prince Harry's Harry Dick falling off, you know, things like that. Um, just so you guys get, like, a cool idea of... You know, the, the sort of stuff I'm about, you know? Uh, I do have to fulfill a quick promise. Uh, I promised a shout out to some dude uh, from Discord. He, I believe, also has a YouTube channel. Uh, if he gives me a link to it, I will put it in the description. But props to him, because I did something a year ago. A lot of you guys probably didn't even notice. All right, in one of my videos, I put in I'll, I'll steal this here quick a second so that I can show you. Uh, I put in in one of my videos a while back a cipher, right, for uh, a, uh, a, like a message, right, a hidden message, secret message that you guys had to find it and you had to decode it. And some dude managed to decode it after Mailman had found it. And there was a couple members in a, in a Discord call with me that were, you know, they got interested and they, they started really searching. They 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 spent quite a, quite a while, quite a while, some of them did. 
so one of them spent i don't know like maybe eight hours trying to find it um man man managed to find it fairly quickly and it got solved i'm not giving out the answer they have specifically asked me not to so if you want to go to some dude and ask him he might tell you uh but otherwise uh it, it is known where the cipher is in the video uh i'm trying to pull up the video right now it was this video one with the red the red hood people found it in the video it's not too terrible far that you'll have to look if you look correctly but it was a single frame i put in there it's coded message for you guys to figure out it's it's got a little bit to do with the, the lore of the channel that i'm working on i am working on another video as well uh about some lore of the channel stuff uh this one will probably be out before it because this is going to be probably a lot easier to edit um but yeah like that was a thing that happened that was really awesome so congrats to some dude and mailman for finding it and then solving it respectively and uh yeah maybe keep your eyes peeled for uh later on see if there might be some more stuff you guys can discover that's hidden within the channel anyhow i'm obviously vc mortem thank you guys for coming by thank you for listening to me app and if you liked what you saw you know maybe hit that like button down there give a little subscribe do me a solid you feel me i think you feel me love you guys goodbye